This case study will detail ongoing research on the perceptions and realities of changing water availability in Glacier Retreat in the Peruvian Andes. Peru is generally thought of as being divided into three zones, the thin desertified coast, the high mountains, and the low-lying rainforest, which makes up the majority of its territory. The Andes Mountains are the longest and one of the highest in the world, running about 7,000 meters along the west coast of South America with an average peak of 4,000 high. Within Peru, the Andes splits into two chains, the western and eastern ranges, with a high altitude valley in between. These two ranges vary quite significantly in the amount of precipitation they receive and their degree of glaciation. Generally, weather moves across South America from east to west. As it moves across Peru, the eastern range forms a rain shadow, leaving the lowlands to capture most of the precipitation and moisture, but the range itself also captures significant precipitation to maintain many glaciated peaks. However, hardly any precipitation reaches the western range, leaving it significantly drier and without glaciers. As such, the ranges are referred to as the Cordillera Blanca and Negra, or white and black ranges, respectively. The valley that runs through the center of these two ranges is known as the Callejón de Huaylas. Focusing further in on the Cordillera Blanca, we find the largest contiguous area of tropical glaciation in the world, seen in these maps as the green and gray shaded figures. Tropical glaciers refer to glaciers that have formed in tropical climates at an altitude where the temperature remains at or below freezing for most of the year. These glaciers, due to their tropical locations, exist only at fractions of degrees above freezing. As such, the small temperature rises predicted for future decades will have dramatic impacts on the survival of these glaciers. Indeed, recent studies have shown that as temperatures rise, the freezing level heights surpass the altitudes at which some glaciers exist in the Andes. In these zones, the glaciers experience daily maximum temperatures above freezing, which exacerbates the loss of mass. There are 722 glacierized peaks in the Cordillera Blanca, which spans 507 square kilometers. The Cordillera Blanca lies in the Rio Santo watershed, which covers 11,600 square kilometers, and provides water for local domestic needs, irrigation and agriculture, the generation of hydroelectric power, industry throughout the region, large and small-scale mine operations, and many growing coastal cities. As such, the climatic, glacial, and hydrological changes taking place in the Rio Santa have attracted attention for some time. Tropical glaciers, like those found in the central Peruvian Andes, are thought of as the first line of science in climate change studies because they are more sensitive to small changes than other geographical features, and also because they are such an important element of water cycles throughout the highlands and desertified coastal areas downstream. From a 1970 baseline developed using aerial photographs, the National Inventory of Peruvian Glaciers shows that glaciers in the Cordillera Blanca have shrunk by 22% in the last 25 years. According to the first National Communication of Peru on Climate Change, published by the Andean Institute of Glaciology and Geology with the National Advisory on the Environment, the amount of water lost due to this recession is equivalent to the total amount of water used in Lima for 10 years. Pastoruri, shown here in this slide, has now been declassified as a glacier due to its extreme recession and, as you see here, fragmentation. The Peruvian Institute for National Resources, which after some recent administrative shifting is now known as the Association of Water, and the French Research Institute for Development have been closely monitoring the glaciers within the Cordillera Blanca for many years. These photos are taken from 1982 to 2008 and show the recent recession of the Yanomare Glacier in the southern region of the range. And here you see the Broji Glacier, which disappeared entirely in 2005. While glacial melt only makes up one piece of the hydrological budget for the Rio Santa, it serves as a critical buffer during the dry season months. Although initial glacial melt increases stream flow at those sites tested, it is widely recognized that as glaciers retreat, this input will decrease. Loss of glacial discharge, coupled with increasing demand and less predictable precipitation patterns, is thought across disciplines to be a cause of future conflict over water availability and use. To date, glacial discharge contributions to stream flow have been measured with select single glacier situations. Scaling up to a watershed from these single situations proves difficult when considering human uses within the watershed. However, Modeling based on several single-site, multi-year meltwater measurements shows that roughly 40% of Rio Santa discharge is glacial meltwater. From the map on the left, you see the various hydrological basins in Peru, with the Rio Santa watershed where the Cordillera Blanca is located, circled in red and blown up on the right. There is a clear distinction between the smaller watersheds of the Pacific drainage and those larger basins on the Atlantic. The Pacific basin has 1.8% of the available water in the country and 70% of the population while the Atlantic Basin has 97.7% of the available water and only 26% of the population. On this map to the right, the glaciers are the blue figure seen on the eastern side of the watershed. Cañón de Pato is a hydroelectric plant for the region. The red star shows Copa Grande, our case study community. Campesino communities in Peru are in a rather ambiguous situation, as they have administrative autonomy over their lands and resources, but are still considered as part of the districts and provinces of the state. 
Districts make heavy demands on available water for growing urban centers, mining activities, and occasionally transfers to the associated communities in the drier Cordillera Negra. There have been some negotiation on who has access to what waters and how they are administered, but for now, no formal organization is recognized to govern the use of this water, and there is concern in the populations about increased conflict as the availability of the resource changes. The case study presented here is ongoing research in Copa Grande, a part of the Campesino community Siete Imperios, which was established following agricultural reform in the 1970s that dissolved large, privately owned land parcels and deeded the land to the indigenous families who had lived and worked there. Copa is a community of about 500 people nestled in the foothills just under the Copa Glacier. The village center lies at 3,300 meters and the glacier peak sits at 6,188 meters. The edge of the glacier can be reached in about three hours on foot by community members, although it's very infrequently visited now due to its dramatic recession. The people of Copa are primarily agro-pastoralists. Each family has one or several fields where they grow crops year-round thanks to the rainy season months of October to May and the use of glacial melt water during the dry season of June to September. Many families also care for several animals, the most common of which are cows, pigs, sheep, chickens, and guinea pig. Most live off of what they grow, only occasionally going down to the market to buy cooking and household supplies. Families earn money through the occasional sale of livestock or surplus harvests, but also through short-term labor contracts with either neighbors who need help during planting, harvest, or building, or with municipal projects such as the installation of the potable water system. Many of the environmental changes in the Peruvian highlands are both measured scientifically and witnessed by local communities. Almost every person interviewed for this research observed that the glacier has receded significantly in their lifetime. They quickly and easily point out places much lower on the mountain where they used to go to pasture animals, gather special flowers, and harvest ice to sell in towns or use their homes to make rasperias or snow cones. Most note that while the glacier was once a social place to gather for young adults or families, now hardly anyone goes because it is so much farther away and more dangerous due to the steep rock walls of the most recent recession. Most subjects note that the seasonality which so marks the agricultural and cultural calendars is now much more chaotic, with some years being better or worse than others. Rain, hail, wind, or frost that once occurred in their time are now less predictable. Some residents claim that frosts and hails are more intense, much like rainfall, which is also said to be harder and colder. Sometimes the rain comes so hard and fast that animals are forced to sit in standing water for days at a time, which rots their hooves. Others note that these hard rains wash out seedlings, ruining entire harvests. This hard rain also exacerbates erosion and damages irrigation canals, paths, and roads. Several of the older subjects asserted that the sun rises quicker and does not last as long as it did in years past, which could be connected to scientific assertions that the changing earth tilt is causing higher UV radiation at high altitudes. Community members are also noting that trees can be grown at higher elevations than before, along with some varieties of potatoes and corn. As short as a decade ago, corn was not a feasible crop to grow in Copa because of its altitude, but now nearly every family rotates it into their field during the year. Farmers also claim that there are many more plagues and diseases that ruin crops and animals. Those interviewed also noted that rats are a new problem in Copa. It is often said that there is now more sickness and disease, which some suggest is due to the pesticides and chemical fertilizers used, but others blame the disease vectors moving up the mountain. Scientific studies have also come to many of these conclusions. They have shown increasing air temperature, more UV radiation, a loss of biodiversity due to habitat shifts, the increasing presence of plagues and opportunistic species like rodents and insects, which are vectors for a number of serious diseases for humans and animals, and the increase in the intensity and frequency of El Nino events, which brings the strong rain, and a significant change in the hydrological cycle which is causing disturbances in agricultural production. In Copa, many are shy about suggesting a reason for this loss in glacial mass, saying it is simply time for the glacier to end. Other responses include increasing temperatures, contamination from mining activities and city life, or the burning of trash, which is common in the highlands.